I know some of you will be really upset at what I have to say today, but that's okay. This video is not for everybody. So if you know you're not in the mood, you're already upset, there's something already, you know, getting your worked up, please go past because I'm not sparing anybody. Hmm? But if you know you want to listen to some few hard truth, then this video is for you. My name is Ify and welcome to my kitchen. I'm not cooking today. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Or maybe I'm going to be cooking up some people because this kitchen is going to get hot. All right, if this is your first time on my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and like this video as well. To my Ifinarians, I love you guys. Thank you for always watching my videos. And please don't be upset at everything I have to say today, especially the last point. Ah, some of you will fight me. Well, it's all good, it's for our good, right? Cool. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. I know some of you are really excited about the topic of our conversation today, how to snag a boyfriend or a husband in 2024. I promise you, you will snag one this year, but you have to listen to me and follow my recommendation. Do what I ask you to do and stop doing the things I'm going to ask you to stop doing. Particularly my last point, that one. It's the most important of everything I'm going to talk about today, all right? So let's start from the spirit of entitlement. I don't know, but we ladies are very entitled. What is going on? Now, let me tell you the story I read on social media very recently. It was a lady's birthday, right? And then, I don't know if it's her boyfriend or a friend or a toaster at talking point. I really don't know who this guy is to the lady. But this guy sent the lady 20,000 naira and said, go and spoil yourself. And then the lady responded, spoil myself with 20k? You know, put the question mark. Anyway, thank you. Of course, I heard the guy blocked her. Why won't he? You see what this lady has done? She's just restricted herself now or she's just limited the guys available to her. That's all she's just ended up doing. Somebody sent you 20,000 Naira in this economy. I don't even care if it's not this economy, even if the economy was booming or whatever. 20,000 Naira, that's his money. He didn't have any reason to send it to you. He could have just wished you happy birthday. Oh, wait. It's a challenge because he said, go and spoil yourself. And in your mind, you're like, how can you spoil yourself with 20K? Is that the problem? Forget it now. He sent you 20,000. I don't care if he had said, oh, have this 20K for a bottle of Coke or have this 20K to buy yourself candy or 20K to spoil, whatever it is. He sent you 20,000 naira. If that is not the spirit of entitlement, I don't know what is. Look, guys are not exempt from the spirit of... Um, entitlement or ingratitude but look i'm focused on the ladies now so this is for we women you cannot you cannot be entitled to somebody else's property so if somebody gives you five thousand naira or two thousand naira or a thousand naira to buy a richard card you should be grateful and say thank you i know you're a big girl you're a big boy you don't need it but i gave you the money say thank you and stop thinking oh you're bigger than that why should you send me a thousand naira but i did Say thank you. Let's move to the next topic. Another issue I want to touch upon is the matter of financial management. I, I know why in the modern day era, why in the Gen Z era, why in everything, but if you're serious about snagging yourself a boyfriend or a husband in 2024, then you need to know how to manage money. And I'm not talking about managing just your husband's money, even your own money, you should learn how to manage it. Just imagine dating someone and the person is a very frivolous spender, anything, no saving culture. Trust me, that is a red flag. I know, and this goes both ways, both guys and girls. I personally won't want to date a guy who does not know anything about saving. It's even worse for ladies. Because the guys are going to run away that, ah, this one is going to finish my money. This one will not know how to keep a home. 
you understand what i mean so you need to be prudent in your spending whether it is your money or whether it's your boyfriend's money that's your fiance or someone who is asking you out you need to be prudent when you go out on dates please do not order the most expensive item on the menu just respect yourself respect yourself ah I see girls, ladies who do this a whole lot. You go out and you want to eat this, you want to eat that, things you cannot even afford with your money. Even if you can afford it with your own money, this is someone else buying you lunch. I mean, exercise moderation and caution. Don't throw caution to the wind and be like, it's not my money, I'm going to eat everything. Or even if it's my money, I can afford it. I know, but please, tread with caution, be prudent. Now, I'll tell you the story of a lady who was dating a guy right and she went to visit him they were only dating at the time the guy gave her i think about seventy-six thousand naira to for a plane ticket that was that time now when you could get a ticket you know in nigeria to fly anywhere you wanted to go the guy gave her seventy-six thousand naira, and you know what she did she said she was already planning to take a bus anyway to her um her wherever she was going to so when the boyfriend gave her the 76k she added her own money and bought a mattress a really good one i think she added about 50k or something and that 10 years later of course they're happily married and 10 years later they are still sleeping on that mattress i can bet you anything that the turning point in that relationship was when the girl did that it may may not be but i'm almost certain because that would have endeared that singular act would have endeared her to the guy she get she took a bus back to her location and stuff but that endeared her to the guy and when i read the comments many guys were like oh my god they would marry such a woman in a heartbeat i'm telling you and it's not because i know some of you are probably thinking hmm, who are these broke guys you people are dating no but guys want to know that the woman who they're going to marry or the woman who they're going to be with is not a wasteful person and that this person is a realistic and it's, it's what realistic now but that this person is a reasonable person that's what i wanted to say that this person is a reasonable person some of you say i beg i don't come this life to suffer why should i take a bus um why should i take a bus instead of spending the guy's money and hey, use your money to buy the flight tickets now you know she said she was already going to go by bus so she saved this money and bought something that 10 years later they are still using it's tangible they can see it and i tell you that that's always going to remind the guy of what a reasonable wife he has in the house so things like that you need to learn how to manage when your husband or your boyfriend gives you money you don't have to spend everything designer bag look i'm not saying these things are bad or are wrong all i'm just saying is moderation moderation especially if it is not your own money and even if it is your money don't spend everything learn to invest learn to save the future is far oh. the future is far and even if it's not the guy's money that you're doing anyhow to he's also watching the way you spend your money and trust me financial issues is a really serious matter when couples get married so you want to learn how to manage your finances just not your own your partner's own as well don't be a sort of person bring your money well i'll help you spend it not giving you anything it is not going to endear your partner to you okay so please 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 learn to be prudent and learn to be reasonable all right my third point is keeping a home that is very important so far you are african you're an african lady you need to learn how to keep a home stop saying eh um, I will hire one or two people to come and help me. Yes, even if you hire people to help you in the house, you know, domestic staff to help you, you need to be able to know what to do so you can give direction and you can order them to do, you know, certain stuff. But if you're not a, who would like an, if you're not someone who knows how to manage a home, then you're going to find it challenging ordering or you know giving directions on what to do that's going to be a problem you don't want to be in your own home and everywhere is unkept everywhere is untidy even though you have people to help you people to support you just because you don't know what to do they will take over trust me okay and your partner your husband or your boyfriend of course i'm not you're not living with your boyfriend at the point so maybe this should 
um, be for married women. Your husband will not be happy with you. He'll come home, the house is looking unkept, the house is looking untidy, and then your claim is, eh, me too, I went to work, I went to work in the morning, you, we both went to work, why is it my fault? Why should I be the one to ensure that the house is tidy and well kept? Newsflash, it is your work. So far you're African. I told you some of you will not like what I'm saying. I told you, but it is the truth. So far you're an African woman or you're an African wife, the responsibility of taking the home or of taking care of the home falls squarely on your shoulder your husband can lend a supporting hand every now and then but it is up to you i'm telling you that you can be with a man here you can see debt on this island on the table and he will not see it they're just wired that way some people are exceptional they're really really neat they don't want everywhere anywhere messy i mean if you have that kind of partner that's good but he, you're not going to leave the whole homekeeping um, responsibility on him. No, he wants to also know he has an equal partner who can keep the home along with him. And most of these guys, they're just tuned to providing for the home. Yes, you as a woman, your work is to support. You also go to work, especially in this economy. When do we even know the support, the supporter or the main person? I mean, the line is blurry because most times it is the women that bring in um, more money. I mean, we've seen the trend. Okay, so even if you are in such a family and you bring in more money, that does not take away your primary responsibility of being the homemaker. That responsibility is yours. It is unfair, but it is yours. So even if you both go out in the morning and come out at 9 p.m., it is your responsibility to get into the kitchen tidy up tidy up the living area make sure your room is tidy if your husband lends a helping hand fantastic kudos if he doesn't you're not going to begrudge him you're not going to nag him you're not going to you're african that's the truth that's the truth get people to help you but like i said if you don't know what to do then the people helping you will quality be as lost as you so you just be paying people money and nobody knows what to do your house is still as unorganized as ever if you don't know all these things follow youtube channels they say follow who no road subscribe to youtube channels that will teach you a lot about home organization how to organize your home your kitchen your bedroom follow these people they will teach you okay and if you're still under your parents wing listen to your parents when your parents teach you how to tidy the home don't think they hate you or what kind of wahala is this? Who does that in this day and age? It is for your own good. Because when you get married, it is one of the things that will fall squarely on your shoulders. And if you don't know how to do these things, you're going to have a tough time. You're going to have a difficult time. So learn it now. If you're a married woman, it is not too late to learn. It is not too late to get help if you need it. But you need to be able to manage and keep your home okay another issue is dealing with your in-laws or in-laws to be now if you're dating you know you're married you're dating you know that your partner has cousins he has siblings older ones younger ones hmm. listen to me and listen good make these people your friends you cannot say eh I don't have business with them. It is just the man I have business with. It is a lie, you. You have business with all of them. And it starts from when you are dating. Because if they see you are friendly, you are accommodating, I think Yorubas call it Oyaya. I don't know. So Yorubas, forgive my pronunciation, but it's called Oyaya. When you can accommodate people, you're, you're happy when people come into your space, you want to feed them, you want to give them, you want to just make them um, happy and comfortable. You need to be able to do that to your partner's family members and even friends. You should be accommodated. If you don't know how to do it, pretend oh, go and learn. Learn from some of your friends that have that or oh, yeah, yeah in them. Pretend. Now, when you get married, you cannot stop pretending. No. You must continue that pretense. Because if you stop under the guise of I am now married wahala for you no come and say it's if that said i should pretend i'm saying 
If you have to pretend, pretend. But when you get married, continue pretending. You cannot stop. You get good. So make sure you're accommodating. Make sure you don't say, it's just my partner. It's just me and him. I don't send his siblings. I don't send his cousins. Recipe for disaster. Recipe for problems. Treat his parents like your own. As far as you can, treat his siblings like your own. Yes, I know that some people are just troublesome. Some people are just problematic. No matter what you do, they will not appreciate you. That's, I'm talking of your partners, um, family members. I know, I agree. But please, just keep being accommodating. I appreciate what they do for you. Be nice, be welcoming. You know the same way your parents will come to your space and you're actually happy and excited to see them. Extend that same warmth, that same happiness, that same glow, that same energy. Extend it to your partner's people right from when you're dating, not necessarily only until after marriage. I mean, it starts from there. They will be, they will, you see, at the end of the day, hmm, marriage is a family thing, though. You cannot say, my boyfriend knows me, he loves me. Love is not enough. It's not the only thing. Your boyfriend might love you, like love you die. Like he's a finished man. You have his mumu button. But if his parents and his siblings and everybody put their foot down, that you are not the one. He may go ahead and marry you, but trust me, it's not going to be on it's not going to be an uneventful marriage or yeah, marriage. You want a situation where you are at peace and you're at ease with all your family members, but your own immediate family and his own, everybody's at peace. So if you belong to that school of thought, that he's my boyfriend, he's the one that I have business with, he's the one that I exchange vows with, or I'm going to exchange vows with, please, dead it. Kill it. It's not good. All right? You don't want that energy. You want to create a happy environment for everybody. They will love you and when everybody's at peace with you, even you, you'll be happy, you will flourish, you'll glow. And your husband will even love you more. I'm telling you, this one is not hearsay. This is gospel truth. Take it from me. Okay? So learn how to do oyaya. And if you don't know how to do it, go and meet some of your friends that have that oyaya in their blood. Learn from them. And just start and pray. God will help you. And this is also for women. You are the age of, you are the marriageable age and everything. You start going to church, you start going everywhere. You want to meet the guys in church. Church is like a hospital. There are all sorts of people there. Fraudsters, poor and I, scammers, all of them are in church. Do you get what I mean? So um, don't go to church because you want to snag a husband or a boyfriend for yourself. Mm. Go to church because you want to serve God. You want to get closer to God. And if you meet a partner who is equally of the same mindset as you are, then all well and good. But please, don't say at the 11th hour, hey, I'm 30 years old, I must start going to church. For what reason? My dear, go for the right reason. And not because you are looking for a partner or a husband. It will shock you. There are all sorts of people in the church who don't be deceived. My last point, which is very controversial, some of you will not agree with me. Some of you will agree with me. Some of you will feel like fighting me immediately. But guys, it needs to be said. As an African woman, the responsibility of cooking, putting healthy and nutritious meals on your dining table falls solely on your shoulder, okay? If your husband loves to cook and wants to assist you, all well and good, but it is, and I'm talking of an African woman. I'm talking of today's African woman, guys. Forget that, oh, why in the Gen Z era, why in the modern era, mm -mm, it still has not taken away that responsibility from you. And it's also your pride to be able to put good food on your table. Now, imagine this scenario. You're at home, your in-laws are visiting, even your parents are visiting, and everyone, of course, wants to have breakfast or lunch, and then your husband gets up and goes to the kitchen, and you're still sitting down to gist while your husband is cooking in the kitchen. Hey! Alu! Abomination! Eh? Your husband will say you have cooked a four for the man. Like, it's not just right. It's not proper. Even if he's the one who cooks, you should stand up and go be with him in the kitchen to help, to support. But you, can, you know how a man can just sit there and relax um, in the living room. When you're done cooking, you bring out the food. That's it. You as a woman, you cannot be chilling 
and be lying down on your sofa or couch and your husband will go and bring out food for you. It is not possible. It is not. Yes, maybe the occasional treat, breakfast in bed, lunch in bed, the occasional treat, but that it is an everyday thing. It's alien to our culture. It is not the norm. Do you get? So you should be able to learn how to cook. And now some of you would say, um, but I wasn't opportune to, I wasn't opportune to learn how to cook. My parents didn't teach me. I didn't grow in, I didn't grow up in a household where cooking was taught to the female child. That's okay. It's never too late to learn how to cook. Whether you're getting ready to be married or whether you are married, you should learn how to cook. And there are lots of free resources on social media. All right? Follow Ify's Kitchen, for example. Ah, ah, don't play, don't play. I teach you how to cook good food and I teach you how to cook from scratch. I mean, you have no excuse. If you don't want the free resources online, like you don't want, it's free, you don't want it. Go and pay, go and learn how to cook. Cooking is not that hard. Just follow the steps and procedures and you'll learn how to cook. Besides, it's a thing of pride now that you're able to feed your family with delicious and nutritious food. Now, some of you will say, eh, I'm going to hire chefs. I'm going to hire cooks. I agree, I agree. We're all busy. So you could hire these people to help you out. But if you don't know how to cook, whatever they give to you, you will eat. Whatever, whether it's healthy or not healthy, whether they're using the, kind, the right kind of product. Like, and you know, I don't know why Nigeria, in Africa here. Mm -hmm. If people know that you don't know certain things, they will cheat you, they will ride on your ignorance. You don't want that. In a home, you want to be in charge. Do you get? You are in charge. The people helping you are helping you, but they know you're in charge. They know you're able to manage the home well, the home front. They're able to organize the home. So they will not, they will not take you for granted and they will not treat you anyhow. They will not look down on you in your own home. Mm? So you should learn how to cook, how to manage the home, how to manage your finances, how to, what did I say again? You should learn how to be accommodating to your in-laws, all right? So with these few points, if you can, if you're able to learn all these things, if you're able to put them as part of your lifestyle, part of you, then you know how you will not snag a man this year and of course there's a god factor so you must continue to pray for the right kind of partner all right and by the special grace of god you will get a partner or a boyfriend this year who will love you who will cherish you who will who will treat you like a queen for you must be ready to treat him like a king yeah thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed watching this video leave me a massive like hit that like button let's get up to 20,000 likes can we we can do it and share this video somebody needs to learn the truth somebody needs to stop being deluded and saying this is the modern era somebody needs to watch this video so please share it okay and um yeah thank you for watching i'll see you in another recipe video or in another video until then take care and keep eating good food Bye.